Hello everyone, I am Squall Casting, and I've got for you more StarCraft II action. In this particular game, we do have Dawncroft as the blue Protoss, playing against Into the Gloam, the red Protoss. So indeed, this will be a competition between the Protosses, as Dawncroft has already observed. Um, and this game was sent to me by Dawncroft here, so thank you for submitting it. He is in the Diamond League. And... Yeah, I like getting replays from the community because StarCraft 2 is awesome and wow, I, I'm having a really hard time doing this for some reason. Um, this is, I think, this might be the fifth game I've cast today, so if at any point I start devolving into just kind of inane chatter and I'm just not making any sense at all, I do apologize. <laughs> but anyway, so in this match we do have a PvP uh, we'll see what happens. Could be a four gate that, even though it's such an old strategy, it can still happen. It's still pretty potent in PvP. But we'll see what happens. Pretty more common these days, something like a, like a, a Robo expand or something like that. That's a bit more typical these days. But we'll see what happens. Both players scouting each other at basically the same time. Neither player has thrown down gas yet. And that's pretty darn typical. Gas at this early would be kind of insane. Dawn of Dawncraft. I always want to say Donovan for some reason. Dawncroft. Mineral walking his probe to safety and just continuing to scout with it. And Red is also scouting, but Dawncroft has not pulled a probe to tail his opponent's probe, so he will be ever so slightly ahead in economy. His uh, Gloam's assimilator finishing up just a second earlier. This gateway finishing up as well, and both players likely going to throw down their cyber cores very soon. And yeah, there is that cybernetic score. Dawncroft now trying to repel his opponent's probe, and immediately returns to mining. So both players playing very typical now. Uh, deviations we could see would be um, one of them expanding earlier than the other, one of them trying for something like say a one gate expand would be a bit more risky. Uh, we'll see what happens. Um, both might try to get another scout in to see what's happening and check on gases. Dawncroft has thrown down another gas, so this will not be the hard four gate that we've sometimes seen. Although he is chrono boosting that warp gate. So it could still be a warp gate, or not warp gate, a four gate, except with more sentries for more force fields. We'll see though. Both players are chrono boosting their warp gate. Could just be they both want to have it, access to it a little bit sooner. Just in case they get attacked. Now Gloam is throwing down another gateway. Donovan has not yet done anything along those lines, so getting a stalker out first. Throwing down a single pile on here. Could be to watch for Blinkens or Void Rays or anything like that. Gloam does have a pro positioned up here, so he might be wanting to put a forward pylon down. He is starting to rally units across the map. Sees that one zealot that Dawncroft is sending in to scout. And just gonna try to catch up to that stalker, but this zealot does not have charge. He's not gonna be able to accomplish too much. And Dawncroft does see the chrono boost on these uh, gateways, and that there are two gateways. So, just throwing down a Twilight Council. Okay, that's interesting getting a sentry out, so it could be he just wants to uh, force field off the ramp until he gets something like Blink done. He is throwing down two more gateways, so going to match, not match his opponent. Okay, Gloam also throwing down a council, but not a third gateway. So mirroring each other to a large extent, but not perfectly. Dawncroft's Twilight Council is finishing up a lot sooner. We'll see if he opts for Blink or Charge. I would guess Blink. But we will see what happens. We'll keep an eye on that production tab. Isn't doing anything with it yet. Is building some zealots out, though. Oh, no, wait. That's Gloom. Gloom is building zealots. Okay. And looks like he might want to push forward a little bit. He's got a bunch of stalkers here at the front. Dawncroft does get wind of that. He does have a sentry there ready to force field. We'll pretty soon have enough energy to throw down a second force field. And there's a forward pylon here, although that's not very forward because you have to go like this. So yeah, Dawncroft did get that force field down, does have another sentry out now, so he will have two um, force fields very soon, warping in a zealot. And both players making Dark Shrine at basically the same time, so... <laughs> it 
clearly both of them having the same idea, and neither of them has detection of any kind. Neither has a robo, neither has a forge. So, unless one of them starts to get a robo, they're both going to be able to kill each other without any sort of counterattacks hitting them. <laughs> Or counterattacks hitting the Dark Temple, I should say. They're probably going to end up with Dark Templars both in each other's bases, murdering everything. It'll be some kind of really goofy base trade. And whoever manages to get a forge and cannons down sooner will win. Who knows. But anyway, Gloom, just keeping his stalkers out here at the front, has a bit of a defensive position at home with a sentry and three zealots. And these Dark Shrines are going to finish up at basically the same time. That one there's done. This one there's done as well. I thought I saw a warp in. Yep, so we have some DTs here. Although he could have warped them in here. Yeah, okay, so he's warping that one in there now. Could be he's sending these ones to try to clean out the stalkers, maybe? And we have DTs coming up here as well. Oh, man, hopefully he sees the ripple. Hopefully he sees the... Oh, no, he does not see the ripple. The Dark Temple are just going to get in and kill everything, and there's nothing he can do about it. We'll see how he reacts. He's going to need to try to pull pro, but also try to keep mining, too, because he needs to... You know, get an economy going. He's going to send both of his up into his opponent's base as well. He is throwing down expand here, even though he's dying. Throws down a forge, the emergency forge. And he's going to need to use those sentries to try to protect the forge if Gloom does try to start killing it. But Gloom also having to run all of his probes, all of the probes dying. The Dark Templar are going to work on the probes, also hitting the zealots, starting to cut everything up. Gloom does not have a forge on the way. Okay, now he's throwing down a forge. He's pulling his stalkers back, but what are they going to be able to do besides die? Gloom losing a lot of probes. And uh, Dawncroft's nexus does go down, but this one's finishing up. His forge is done, but he does not have enough minerals to throw down a cannon. Gloom, though, is not focusing on the forge. He is not looking at those Dark Templars. He's trying to save his own base. And Dawncroft going to go to work on the Dark Shrine. Gloam with very few probes left, so... Oh, never mind. Gloam has more probes than Dawncroft. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, <laughs> this forge, though, is going to die before he can get any cannons down. He does force field this ramp, and if he can perma force field that ramp, he will be able to keep this nexus safe from these Dark Templar, and that Dark Shrine there has died. So Red does not have any Dark Templar out on the map that aren't up here. So if Dawncroft controls really well and force fields this ramp at the right time, he will be able to keep this nexus safe and potentially rebuild. Gloam, though, losing this nexus. Does he have enough minerals for another nexus? Okay, he built another, another pylon over there. This nexus has not gone down, but there's no mining going on. So Gloam looks like he could be in a bit of an awkward spot. But the Dark Templar did get down. The sentries did not force field. Dawncroft now in a terrible position, down to just two probes. He does have three minerals. Looks like he was trying to save up to get a Nexus. No, but chooses to warp some Zealots in and another Dark Templar. So he's going to keep working on his opponent's base. This Dark Templar just kind of hanging out. Oh, okay, that's Gloam's Dark Templar, but I can't see that guy. Even though they're both invisible. So go figure. And Dawncroft moving some sentries up here. What are his sentries doing here? Okay, well, it looks like he's trying to attack in. Um, Gloam's Dark Templar killing Dawncroft's zealots. Dawncroft's Dark Templar unable to be seen. <laughs> Dawncroft finding this situation pretty much hilarious. Gloam has not rebuilt his base and is now being revealed, but da uh, Dawncroft is also losing his nexus. So both players just in a very difficult position. Gloam has moved all of his probes around this single cannon. But he has no Nexi and no minerals. And Dawncroft doesn't have any minerals either. So neither of them has any ability to rebuild. But Dawncroft could be in trouble because Gloom has a cannon. <laughs> and he has no ability to kill these Dark Templar that are killing his base. And at this point, he needs to try to kill his opponent as fast as possible. Uh, looks like he's pulling back maybe to try to take out this cannon? Oh, I don't know. I mean... I feel like you should leave one Dark Templar here to kill these buildings, one Dark Templar here to kill that pylon. Once he's killed them all, then rally up. Hmm. And Gloom just pulling on back to that single defensive cannon. Dawncroft does have a single assimilator there and a probe, a probe that can't do anything. 
probably going to pull them to try to attack. Looks like Doncroft did lose one of his Dark Templar, potentially a Zealot, so that's definitely bad. Uh, let's do a unit count here. Doncroft has a Zealot, three Dark Templar, and a Probe. Gloom, though, has 13 Probes, three Dark Templar, and a Cannon to help them see. So this is looking very, very difficult for Doncroft. Let's see what happens, though. So it looks like he's going to go up here, try to kill his uh, opponent's cyber core again. He has picked off the pylon there. Bloom, Stark Templar, continuing to work away at Donkov's completely gutted base. Cyber core goes down. This assimilator is going to die. It looks like he just set up a bunch of waypoints. Yup, he did. So both players are just in very awkward position, but I do have to give the advantage to Gloam. He has the ability to continue attacking Doncroft's base while keeping two of his buildings alive no matter what. Hmm. And here goes the final pylon for the Gloam. So the only two buildings he has left are these two. Doncroft in the meantime has this, 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 that, that, this. And this. So Doncroft does have an advantage in terms of the number of buildings he has remaining. But he does not have an advantage in terms of detection. Gloam has monopolized the detection market. And so there is basically nothing that Doncroft can do now. Looks like he's going to pull up to that assimilator to try to defend it. Hmm. And where? Okay, there's, so there's still Dark Templar there. Still working away at that assimilator. And, uh, I think we draw. I think. No, I win. Need to make sure. <laughs> so having a bit of a discussion about the draw conditions, um, I'm trying to remember what they are exactly. It has to do with, um, if no one has any production buildings left and they don't build anything or have the capability to build anything for something like five minutes, then I think that's a draw. Lol, draw. Nope. Um, you can never kill my last building. Oh, he's right. Go ahead and try. Oh, really? <laughs> he's made a wall of Dark Templar, and his opponent's Dark Templar will not be able to slip through that. And Red has no ability to get detection there, so he can kill those Dark Templar. So, yeah, this, uh, this looks like it will be a draw. So, Gloom is taking forever to kill stuff, so I'm just going to start speeding this up. My first draw. Amazing. So, I'm just going to speed it up. Looks like he's going to go down there now, kill that final pylon, then head on up to that assimilator. Oh, here we go. We'll see if he is able to slip through. I, I'm pretty sure that is a perfect wall as far as being able, Dark Templar being able to get through. And, yep, he can't get through. <laughs> he's, you can see him clicking around. Pulls on back. And Dawncroft is not going to unhold position those Dark Templar no matter what. Because he knows what will happen if he does. Moving his single zealot forward to just uh, be the commander of the Dark Templar. Even though these Dark Templar are masters, instructors. Fun, ain't it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so I think this will be a draw. Hmm, looks like he's going to send some probes forward. Try to do something. Might be trying to bait the Dark Templar out. But uh, Dawncroft is not falling for that. And uh, that probe is... Juking back and forth for no reason. Dawncroft with an owl. Oh, it looks like he took a swipe on the Zealots from his opponent. So, yep. Or his opponent's Dark Templar, I should say. This Dark Templar is an executor. He is the hero of the Protoss race. But even executors can't get through walls of invisible units. This Dark Templar murdering that single pylon. Looks like another pylon is going to try to come forward. <laughs> and Dawncroft is doing a fantastic job of thinking on the fly. And using the remaining units he had to force a draw so he does not lose those points. So yeah, I'm just going to speed it up. We'll keep an eye on the chat. There really isn't anything else happening here. How long till timer starts, I wonder? Ha ha ha, yes. PvP is so ridiculous. Indeed. Said as though it were Teal. So I'm guessing that uh, now that they were seeing some sort of draw timer where it's like the game will draw in X minutes because you have no production buildings. Oh, man. I didn't know if it was a ploy or not. Oh, no. I'm an honest man. Nice to meet you, by the way. You too, sir. Both players having a bit of respect for each other. That's fantastic. 
First draw for you too? Yep. I think I'll mine some gas and keep it. <laughs> oh man. Time to dance. And look at that zealot dance. Oh yeah. Dancing in fast motion. Rock on zealot. Looks like that zealot might almost accidentally stab itself in the face with the psi blade. Looks like it's done dancing for the time being. GG, sir. And Gloom has left the game. Replay complete. So thank you guys for watching my game. That was kind of a ridiculous game with both of them going Dark Templar with neither of them having detection. So, yeah. Thank you for watching my video. Please do like and subscribe. Leave comments in the comment section below. And I will see you guys later.